What up brothers, welcome back to my channel for another new review. As you can see, the figure in front of you is the Elder Predator from Predator 2. And I've got to say, straight out of the box, it's a beauty. Something very eye-catching about it. I'm still going to score it up, go through the seven individual categories, tell you what my thoughts are on each, and then the overall score. I'm going to try and clarify some of my scoring techniques and why I give certain figures certain marks, just so the fucking idiots can understand it. Because I go blow it face trying to explain how just because a figure gets a low score doesn't make it a bad figure. It just means that it falls down in certain categories, although it's really good in others. I think most get it, but there's a few fucking retards knocking about. So I'll try and clarify that as we go. I will also say if somebody do me on a, a post in this review on uh, the 1-6 Republic on Facebook and on Sideshow Freaks, I would appreciate that because as of today... I've got a two-week ban from Sideshow Freaks and uh, I've been kicked off the 1-6 Republic. Not to worry, though, because I've I've just finished crying. I've been ever so upset because it, it means world to me, obviously, to be on them forums. Uh, but like I say, I, I'm not going to cry about it any longer. I, I'm all out of tears today. But uh, what I've done, and you will see in the link below, is uh, got me head together with a few of the guys who are fucking sick of these little little moderators going round snitching on people, looking over your shoulder, thinking that they're fucking somebody they're not. They talk to you like there's no way they would in real life. So I'm just sick of it. So like I said, I've got my head together. We uh, set to other guys. We've created a group, which is a 1-6 forum, but it's totally unpleased. There've been no moderators, no administrators, anything. I've set it up and we can all add people. It's an open group. You can come, you can talk about anything you want. Only thing we wouldn't want is obviously this, the simple things, racism, death threats, shit like that. Other than that, you can say what you want. You can argue with you want. You can make a point about the collectors because, like I've said before, I don't owe any of them anything. There's a couple of wankers out there, what I've found. Denny Kim being one of them, and I would never support his fucking work again. The little cunt and his little bitch boy right-hand man fucking Omar fucking Suarez fucking junior whatever he's called little bitch can get away with calling me what he wants or fucking disrespecting me or having a go at me on every forum and seems to get away from it obviously somebody's having a ride on his mum so he can get away with everything um but because uh, people don't get to stick the cock in my mum it seems that when i pop onto a forum i can't say what i want to say i get kicked off but anyway i don't really give a fuck because YouTube's my first love, that's where my majority of subscribers is and where I found the enjoyment of this hobby. So like I said, I don't really mind not being on OSR um, too much anyway and obviously Sideshow Freaks. If I choose to go back, it'll be in two weeks' time. If not, they want to kick me full time. I don't really give a fuck because it's full of fucking self-fucking promoting pricks over there and i'm biggest self-promoter you ever want to fucking meet so i should really fit in over there but i don't seem to anyway let's get on with this review this fucking figure is too beautiful for me to be talking about them little bitches anyway i'm gonna get a scored up like i say i'm gonna try and make it foolproof uh, but uh, i will say before we cut there won't be too many extreme poses, and that reason will become very clear probably when I get to the body section or articulation. Right, rant over. Let's get on to the review. Starting off with source material. Now, this is going to be a tricky one to score because I have seen Predator 2. I've seen it a few times when it first came out and a couple of times since. I've got to say I fucking hated it when it first came out, although... The other times I've seen it, it does sort of grow on me more and more. And obviously, the fact that the Predators have then gone on to have other films, the Pred vs. Alien films and the new Predators film, I do sort of now see the, I suppose, mythology behind it. So, whereas before, I just saw it as a poor sequel, I, I probably look at it differently now. I do see the value in the movie. Although... I won't go mad and say it's as good as the original because I don't think it is. I think the creature as a whole works better in the jungle for whatever reason. I don't know why, but I just think it... Uh, I don't know. I just think it fits better in the first film. 
The other reason that it's a tricky one to score is because this actual figure, or this Predator, the Elder, appears for about a two minute section where it pretty much gives Danny Glover the uh, pirate pistol, picks up his buddy, who's now minus an arm, and fuck off back to their homeland. So, that that's why I find it hard. So, do I take into account the strength of the film? If that were the case, I'd probably give it a two. Do I take into account the fact that this actual Predator is in it very little? Or do I take into account the fact that the last time this figure were released, it went through fucking roof? It is really sought after. Do I bear that in mind? Now, as a fair reviewer, like I like to class myself, I take everything into account um, and try and sort of balance out my opinions either way and give sort of a fair sort of a fair score for how I see it. Now, I think on the City Hunter Predator, which is the main Predator in Predator 2, I think because the film I would have ranked probably a three, I can't then rank this one as highly, simply because it only features for a split second. So it's very hard to see, is the figure accurate? How cool that Predator is? Do we just go on how it looks? I don't know, it's a tricky one, but I feel the fairest way to score it would be to give it a two, because, like I said, the film I would probably only score a two or a three anyway. The City Hunter Predator, I think I only gave a, a three, so this one, to be fair, and obviously to show the sort of the pecking order, I could only give this a two out of five for the source material. I hope that's very clear. I've tried and explained it so even a child could get it because my dog Buster sat outside of me and he's nodding because he seems to understand what I'm trying to say but that is why I've given the source material a 2 out of 5 before I cut out I'll just show you round it because I don't like I said I don't think the pose is going to get too dramatic and I will also say at this point when I set a figure up the initial shot it's normally pretty easy straight out of box on its stand in front of the packaging just to give you an idea of what it will look like when you take yours out of the box. Now, I've got to say this is one of the niggliest bitches you're ever going to fucking deal with. For a couple of reasons. One, you have to sort of put three strands of his hair into this band. Which were pretty easy to do. It's just a matter of stretching these out and sliding that band up. But if you don't get the rubber dreads equal, it fucking stands off like that. So you're having to keep pulling a bit more of that one back out and then tucking them two in a little bit more so it will lay down something like that. See, it even stands off the air a little bit now. So that were a little bit niggly. Another thing is you have to put on this sort of set of trophies here. You see them? And all you do is put it off at top of head. Now you'd think that that were really easy. But it's not, because what happens is, the string on this gets tangled in with the string on his dreads, and then you sort of put it down the back of his neck, and then you've got to fucking pull all the dreads back out, so they're not all trapped underneath this set of bones. Another thing, the instruction manual tells you, this head don't pop out, so I'm thinking, this is going to be a bitch. Then when I try to dip the head forward, the head does pop out, but it don't pop out where it normally would, somewhere up here. It actually comes out of the bottom of the neck peg. So the head will still come off, and it probably is easier to pop that head off to put the chains on. But I didn't really, I sort of did it in the wrong order, because the book tells you not to try and pull the head off. But like I said, trust me, the head will come off, just not where the predator's heads normally come off. Right, rolling onto the packaging. Again, I am going to score it out of five, but what I'm going to do is, because the people at Sideshow Freaks didn't seem to grasp, I'll do an independent review, and the fact that I don't take into account what company makes it, I, I do try and compare everything equally, be it Enterbay, be it Blitzway, be it Hot Toys, be it iMinimi, or be it Play Toys, or whoever. Even companies that I've never heard of, if somebody sends me an head sculpt, I would still try and score the packaging as fairly as possible, if that makes sense. But anyway, I'll first off give you the scale that I would go to. For any packaging to get a five would have to be standout packaging, and I always go back to The Godfather by Hot Toys, simply because the artwork is good. There's a cutaway section on the front with felt coming through from a layer underneath. 
the clam trays are all individually carded. It includes like a wedding album style brochure. It is just really, really well packaged. Packaged. Everything is housed real housed really well. Sorry. The the standard of cardboard is really good, thick, durable. It just looks classy. So in its own right, it is a work of art. Now, if a figure comes with poor packaging, it doesn't make the figure a poor figure. What I am doing is scoring the box, not the figure at that point. So in this case, it's a slipcover box like we've seen on most of the Marvel films. So it would slide up, very little artwork other than quite a nice shot on the front, which is the figure. No artwork on the sides as such and nothing on the back. So, normally, like I say, the Godfather would be a five, a very easy five. I have also had other figures that I rank very highly packaging wise and I know some people don't even care about packaging. Right, a four would be a DX box if it arrived without the top corner DX rip, which normally happens on that corner because the box wraps round. The DX one, I like the functionality of it because it's a magnet side, it has multiple layers inside, be it a foam one and then a clam underneath. Everything is housed and protected really well and they're normally quite a cool design, so very presentational. A three on my scale would be a normal slip cover or like the old holographic style slip covers or a shoebox style one that Marvel sometimes do. That would be a three because it's normally quite good standard cardboard, the artwork is acceptable, but because it is used over and over and over and over again, then I would bring the score down simply because all the showing is is rehashed boxes instead of developing new. That is what I would give a three. Now, with this one, I'm tempted to take it down to a two, simply because it is only a slip cover, the artwork is not amazing, but they've used very fine cardboard. Now, I think they do that on the Predator figures in general to keep the weight down because obviously the figure weighs more than a standard figure. So that is maybe why they seem to use a thinner ply of cardboard on this box. A two would be something like a play toy box, which although it has artwork and individual compartments for the hands, the knives, the figure, everything, the stand if it has one. That would be a two because it's normally low quality card, no artwork, no licensee, or very little artwork, no license, or something like that, or a standard design. So that is what I would give a two. A one would be something that I'd seen over and over and over again. It didn't house the figure. It came and it were damaged. It came and it were poor quality card. Now, for example, an iMini Me box, has nothing on the front other than the company name, whatever the company is called that week. So, inside, they have got a magnet side, good. There is decent quality cardboard, good. But inside that, you get a central pocket, so to speak, for the figure, and then you get two long slits down the side, which, if you've got a pistol inside a little air, pro uh, air pocket bag, it's gonna move around. And if they're trying now to slide in a stand, there's no place for it, so it's pretty much rammed in on top of the figure. So that for me has got to be a one. Does that make sense to anybody? Because it makes perfect sense to me. It's just order of how good it is. How could I give that box a three? Because I would be saying that an I mini me box is as good as that. All right, fucking up. Hold on. Quiet, everybody. I can hear him shouting from Sideshow Freaks. You can't compare lot times to I mini me once mass produced and one's only got eight people working for him. To that I would say, don't get too sweaty shitty folks about that. I'm comparing what is in my hand at that very moment. Try please to understand. <sighs> anyway, to score this box, I'm going to give it, you probably guessed it, anybody who watches more than one of my reviews, a three out of five. Right, rolling on to likeness. And I've got to say, if I weren't me, but I was watching one of my reviews, I would pretty much skip straight forward to likeness. Because, for me, if the likeness is good or the likeness is there and you can instantly recognise who that figure is meant to be, then everything else 
pretty much don't matter or falls into place. I always say it, the most important category, if the facial likeness is bad, the figure is off to start with. If the facial likeness is good, then you can pretty much work around it. Not that you should have to work around it, but you can work around it. That is the point I make. Now, I will also say, when I am scoring up the likeness, I do not take into account, was it, was it a one of a kind? Was it sculpted and then recast? Who sculpted it? Was it sculpted, recasted, and then I'm painted? Was it machine painted? Was it fucking 3D printed? I don't take any of that into account. I don't give two fucks the process of it getting from the drawing on the piece of paper to being made, to painted, to getting to me. All I care about is how that stands there now. I can't make this clear enough. Now, if everybody else's looked amazing, but mine had a massive fucking ink spot on top, then I would comment on that because that is the one I've got in hand and can see. I think I make this more than clear in most reviews. I will look at it like this, for example, without putting the film on now and standing this figure side to side with film, I can't tell you how accurate that is. That is the honest truth for it. I can tell you that it resembles who it's supposed to be because the standout features, namely the blue dreads, the sort of spiked section on the top of its head, the look of sort of the quills here and here and here, the lower section of tusk coming through the bottom of his mandible and the earring there, that makes it familiar to me. Now, like I said, I don't want to be a nitpicker to the degree where I will put a still of the film on, a picture of that, and I'll start circling it like people do. Show it, this don't look right, the jaw's not square enough, his mandibles didn't close that much, his teeth wasn't broken in the film or it weren't in this scene, blah, blah, blah. I don't really want to go that in depth. If the figure looks like who it's supposed to and it's close enough for me, then I will score it pretty high. Then I'll take into account, is the paintwork any good or whatever. Not that I have to explain this because one of the strong categories on the good, the bad and the ugly figures were the head sculpts and paintwork, be them done by computer or done by hand or done by a fucking camel, I don't know. They looked exactly like who they were supposed to. And to be honest, I'm a little bit flattering because... Too cold is not as good as I said it were in the review. But anyway, onto this figure. Now, in general, I do like it. And then he actually asked me if I thought that the skin colour on the head was the same as the body. I would say it's not a 100% ma uh, match, sorry. But also remember that the dome of the head is sort of catching the majority of that light, which is coming down from above, as you can see. So, in hand, and I don't want to be fucking cliche as fuck, in hand, it's not as notable, I don't think. But anyway, I think Nenny has now got the figure, so he will know himself. So that. The one confusing thing with the head sculpt for me, and I mentioned it on Facebook, it still does have the mandible seams. If I try and get close, you might see them. Particularly on top. You see the two seams where the mandibles will swap out. Now, bear in mind on this one, it doesn't. They are glued in place. I can understand that probably from the sculpt that it comes from or the mould, it is easier to mould the head minus the mandibles and then attach them after. Also, I would think it makes it easier for paint as well, so I can understand it. Although, I don't know. It's... Uh, it is notable. I'm not going to lie and say it's not. It is notable, but I think that... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's enough for me to bring it down sort of thing. I will say the paintwork on this one is really cool looking. I've had a few Predators through this house. The Berserker, Tracker, Falconer, Classic, Original, Wolf were awesome. I recently did the Ancient and now I've got this. I might be missing one. I don't know. And I've got to say, when you look at this one, there is something very cool about it. And I know in the back of my mind, I'm thinking this is a remake of the one the price fucking rocketed up on. So I've got that in my mind, so that might be making me, my judgment clouded. I do like it, because when I used to look at pictures and think, oh, fucking hell, I'd like that Predator, but I can't really afford it. The old shit, the old um, one with the shit style body, I used to look at it and think, oh, fucking hell, if that weren't 700 quid, I wouldn't mind that, or if it weren't 800 quid, I wouldn't mind it. So now I've got this version which replaces that, I'm thinking to me saying, 
is it really as good as I think or is that just my perception because I know how sought after the previous version were I hope that makes sense but like I said when I took the pictures yesterday put them on Facebook a lot of people were buzzing to see this predator and that's why I think that it will be or will become as sought after as the uh, the mark one version so what do I score the likeness I think it is predator enough for me I think there is parts of the head that are just a remold of the classic or of the ones that's come before and then they've just re-sculpted this section on round his cheekbones like changed up his mandible slightly there is that but like i said it's close enough for me it's like i said i don't know if it's perfect so i won't try and tell you if it is the only niggle with it i suppose is the seam on the uh, mandibles and because they're not interchangeable so you don't get that option although people will say well he never opened his mouth in the film that might be the case but i just think for my pose options if this stays on my shelf then i would have liked it to have the interchangeable mandibles and i'm not saying it had to be the widespread ones again but just a slightly different position would have been good for me so i am just going to bring the likeness down to a four out of five all right rolling on to outfit or lack of in this case and how do I score outfit obviously I don't have to tell you all he's basically wearing is the shin guards which have a metallic look and sort of battle damage and the sculpt which is what it is the uh, thigh guards with the strapping sort of cod piece section the triple belt makeup which I'm not buzzing about to be honest on the other side you can see again the thigh guard or the hip guard looking around it does have like a leather like loincloth at the back I suppose you could call it going up here he does have his med pack or med kit leading onto his plasma cannon a shitload of trophies in his hair over his little bum bag or pouch or whatever you want to call it hanging around his uh, neck he's pretty much predator's answer to fucking be a baracus he loves his trophies this lad he's got them all over remember when mr t used to have them feathers in his hair this is this is pred equivalent and then he used to have all them gold chains and shit oh he's got them all he's got them all but he's made them out of skulls this lad he's not made them out of gold he even got his rings on his finger, looking beautiful. He's a bit of a pimp daddy. He's been around a while, he's an elder, and he's fucking rocking his fucking trophies. He loves it, he loves all like that. Look, he's even got a skull trophy. Front of somebody's skull, on top of his fucking sheath for his sword. Beautiful. Now, for the idiots among you, that outfit, how could I, how could I give that a fair score against something like any one of them look they're all lovely outfits mixed materials all looking good all fitted and everything how could i do it i don't know i'd have to take into account they're made by damn toys and that's made by hot toys and blah 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 or would i just think no i can only review what comes with it i can't take into account that this ain't made of real leather and his belts aren't real leather i can pretty much just give a comment on what i see what i get how would i do an outfit on an Iron Man. You know what I mean? How could I compare Iron Man's outfit to fucking Thor's outfit, to Spider-Man's outfit, to Hulk's fucking shorts? How could I do it? Compare them to them five. They're totally different. So all I can do is review what I've got in my hand. So what do I take into account? In something like this, because it's majority sculpted, I'm thinking, is everything in full working order? Yeah. Is it well painted and well sculpted? Yeah, pretty much. The straps, do they look authentic? Do to me, apart from the belts, I'm not keen on. The strap which covers the elbow joint is pretty nice. Yes, sir. The, uh, the gauntlet with the blades come out, the blades go in and out really nice. Again, the sculpt works. Does the sculpt look metallic? Looks metallic enough to me. Is everything 
Is the strap on his thing breaking? No, everything's pretty much in full working order and good enough for a Predator. So then in my mind, I'm thinking, how would I compare it to another like-for-like -like figure? So, sir, another Predator. As you can see, you've got classic down there lurking away. Is it as good as that? Yeah, it's pretty much in line with it. So then I've got to start looking at that review. What did I give the outfit? And then I've got to start looking, is this one better, same, worse? How do I score it? I don't think to me saying, fucking hell, did Kato make that outfit? No, he didn't. Oh, shit, I'm going to have to knock that down. Uh, how many people at Hot Toys Factory are actually working on this outfit? There are only three of them. Oh, no. I'm going to have to knock it down no more. Or what I'll do is I'll set up another set of reviewing scores so that I can take into account the company that made it. No, I don't do any of that. I don't bother too much about that. What I do is I'll put a review out, gain it a score, and think the viewer will understand or get this. He'll have his own opinion where he doesn't agree with me, but what he won't do is come back and tell me what I should and shouldn't review and how I should and shouldn't review. That's fucking as simple as I can make it. So again, let's get back to this figure. I do in general like it. I like the overall look of it. Like I said before, the belt rigging, this one's fine because it's got the, the sheath attached to it and I don't mind that and it drapes quite natural and lets the sword sort of go down the back of his right leg. The black section here, I don't know, looks a little bit plasticky for me as well. I think uh, it wouldn't have hurt to put a leather section in there or a faux leather section in there. Also the colours of these two belts. Now, I've looked at some stills from the film or the other figure as well, and I think to myself, it could be accurate, but it sort of draws away from me. I, I don't like the aesthetic of how it is. I wish it had just had like a darker brown wash. And also the belt underneath, which there's really no need for, and it's pretty much just a re-sculpt of the classics belt anyway. I don't know, it just looks a little bit cluttered because you've got sort of the the different colour plastics, and then underneath that you've got this sort of green shaded loincloth, and it just looks a little bit of a gathering to me. Now, I'm not saying it's not accurate, I don't know for sure if it is or not, but what I'm saying is, to my eye, I don't find it very pleasing. What I do like, like I said, is this, because it's sort of, when it came out of the box, it was pushed down around the top of the gauntlet, but just, it is loose, you can just slide it up, and it does cover the joint, which helps with realism, I suppose. You don't see the toyish joint. On this one, the joint is very obvious. I wish they'd have put another one of those on there, even though it might not have them been accurate, but I just wish they would have. Again, obviously, you can't get to his detonator because it's all wrapped up, and I think that is accurate also. His plasma cannon, or ion cannon, or whatever you want to call it, is pretty much just a copy of the classic Predator. Very, very similar. Like I said... It is nice, it does move, it does articulate. Um, so yeah, all in all, good. Not amazing, like I said, but it couldn't be. There's not enough to it. So, what did I get? I will say, and I noticed this on my other Predator, sometimes these things, these nets, they sort of get stuck around the crutch grabs. So I don't like that on them. I would just wish there was... I know they can't really change it because that's how it's supposed to be. But sort of in this section, I don't like how the crutch grabber grabs onto that. Also, putting these trophies on were a niggly pain in arse, which pissed me off a little bit. And also... What else did I mention? There's something I didn't like. Oh, the belts. I'm not too keen. Like I said, they might be, they might be accurate, but I'm just not keen on them. I just find them a little bit... Cheap looking, I suppose, but uh, I don't know how they could have done it. They could have possibly used faux leather, but I don't know. So on the outfit, and obviously due to the lack of it, and it's stuff I've pretty much seen before, I'm only going to give it a three out of five. Hold on to articulation. This will be a point of interest for some of my fans over on Sideshow Freaks, because they don't understand why I would score a body down to a one that they feel is good enough. So let me explain it. And it's going to be tricky with this because obviously we're talking about a Predator, which is pretty much a statue with very limited articulation. We know that going in and we expect it. It's So if you're losing articulation, then you've got to have the aesthetic. Do you get that with this figure? 
I think so, although I will say some of the parts are just re-sculpted and repainted, which I sort of condemn when it comes to the Iron Man. But on this, because they are all pretty much the same, well, they are the same breed, but uh, your variants would be in the skin colours and sort of facial designs, and obviously then the armour they choose. So I'm expecting that probably the thighs are the same and the, the body section and blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't be telling you nothing you didn't know. So what I'm thinking about is, for a predator, how articulated is it? Now, some of them are surprisingly articulated. This one, and I don't know why, and I think that uh, Nenny's found exactly the same with his. It's tight as fuck. I wish our lass were this tight, I've got to be honest. She... It, everywhere you bend it, it just feels rock solid. It pretty much is a statue, and that's why you'll notice that I haven't done much pose-wise. The most niggly part of the articulation for me is the neck, because you can never, and I'll show you this, and I'll probably put in the outtakes the first time this happened, you could suppose it said down. I like a predator sort of more down than it is there. See? That's what happens. You've got a ball joint in neck, and this head apparently is not supposed to come off. You tip its head forward and it just fucking pops out, which is a pain in the arse to me. So that is the articulation that really fucking pisses me off. Now, you're going to have to give me a second to get this bitch pose back up. Right, got his head back on. Got one of his chains back on and that long and I'm not even fucking about with that again. You've seen it on. So, right, like I'm saying, the neck articulation is very, very limited. You can pretty much move it side to side. You can't really tilt it back because it'll pop off. You can't really tilt it forward because again, it'll pop off. And then you'll just be fucking hindered by trying to put it back on when he's got the rubberized dreads, grabbing older the beads that are sort of tied to sections of his hair. And you'll end up throwing your fucking predator through a window. And that's the last thing you want. Like I said, a little bit niggly that uh, they said that head don't come off and it comes off easier than any other predator I've seen. So yeah, the arms are pretty much tight as fuck at the elbows. The upper arms move pretty well because there's no sort of restriction really at that side. That will just sort of move out of the way. As you can see, moves pretty easily out of the way. So it's not too bad at the upper arm. Hardly anything through the waist and then the top of my legs are tight and the knees are also very tight so like i say you're pretty much talking about a figure that's pick a pose and stick with it which they're not my favorite figures i've got to be honest i like to be able to repose and i do like natural poses and with this i can't make it as natural as i want simply because i can't dip the head forward so to score this figure the body looks good but it's fucking as hard to pose as any predator i've ever known so See, what I would do is now, nah, does does the aesthetic outweigh the functionality? In this case, I've got to be honest and say it does, because I do like the sort of mixture of the, the pale flesh and sort of the blue. It's kind of a, an ink blue. As you see up the legs, up his rib section, then onto the outer parts of his arm, which leads up then onto his head. So, yeah... It does look really nice, I've got to be honest. And obviously, I'd just talk about the blue. As you can see, he's got the blue in on his feet, which then goes along with his dreads as well. It does look really, really nice. If you could get it in that pose and you look at it and think, oof, I've got it, I've done it, that's enough, you'll probably never repose it. So, the body is good enough. Right, so I've got it. I'm going to give it a three. I'm going straight out middleweight right now. Why would I score a body less than that? Now, I think, if you remember the old Rocky figures with the rubberized body, any boxing figure, in my mind, needs a seamless body. Now, if it looks good, but it still articulates slightly, then I'll allow it. But when the body itself looks fucking terrible, like Ivan Drago, and then you lose articulation as well, then I would probably mark that body down to a two. Now, any figure, and I'm thinking about something like Carlito, you will never see Carlito topless or sleeveless, so why the fuck give him a single bend elbow? Don't know. So that would make me mark a body down. Um... These, as articulated as you can get them, they look really good. You're always going to see the messy joint. So, 
as good as the body sculpt is on all these basketball figures I would always mark the bodies down because you can see the elbow joints in Blake's case the knees which are slightly messy stuff like that I would mark the bodies down now to go down to a one is really tight why would I do it now in all honesty and the only mistake I made in the good the bad and the ugly review is I marked Angel Eyes and Tuco down to one that's because I'd marked Blondie down in my mind to a one simply because his elbow were fucking broke the body is shit to start with including the hands it's fucking garbage and I don't take that back and you can say they can't afford to add better bodies or they use these bodies because they've got a fucking massive amount of room I don't get two fucks like I've said before I'm just reviewing that figure that stands there at the moment. Now, I could have, and I were going to give Angel Eyes a three and Tuco a three because that body, if it's working right and if it's tight enough and the hands fucking actually hold some it, then I would have probably give it a three. That's what the the honest thing is what about it. But on top of that, the hands didn't hold the accessories correctly. So I've then got to think, right, oh, I can't get a three. The hands don't work. And you all know that, yet you all accept it. And I think, I can't fucking score it a three because that would bring it in line with something else that's a three that would be better than that. So then I think to myself, do I get a two? Which then I thought, shall I give Blondie a two? But the fact that Blondie's got a double bend elbow covered by a sleeve and he still can't fucking bend it all the way up because the hinge on the body is that bad, what else could I have get it than a one? And then I thought to myself, right, now if I give Blondie a 1 and them to a 3, then Blondie's going to end up with 19 and they're both going to end up with 21. And then I'm going to have fucking retards over on Sideshow Freaks or at iMinimi saying, Blondie's best at 3, yet he got lowest scores. So I thought, fuck it, bring them all down to a 1, so then they all end up with 19. Is that fucking clear or am I a fucking retard? The body is shit to start with, the hands are fucking worse than shit, and it were broke. It's fucking borderline broke. It's got a double bend elbow that does not bend. I showed that in the review. Fucking score my reviews up and tell me if you come up with something different, you fucking idiots. Fuck it. And this ain't everybody over there, I've got to make it clear. There's some people over there that's very understanding and they'll say, well, I don't agree with you, but fair enough. But there's them who will tell you the same thing over and over and over again. And I'm thinking, I just reviewed the three figures in front of me. I was asked to do the review. They're not even figures I would be fucking that interested in, in all honesty. And they don't even fucking help me channel that much. I could review an Iron Man and get 20,000 views and no I mini me figure is ever gonna get more than two or three thousand. So they don't even fucking help me channel. That is the honest truth for it. I mini me are that fucking irrelevant to the majority of my subscribers that video won't get viewed. Now all these fucking idiots over on Sideshow Freaks that's criticizing it, they push the views right up and I think you're fucking dullards at best. And then they're over there saying, because he swears he's thick as fuck, and I think, oh fucking hell. You're playing right into me hands, you fucking idiots. Fucking idiots. And I think to me saying, can you not understand why I give that body a fucking one out of five? Because it's shit to start with and it's broke. Simples. Anyway, back to this review. The body on this is a three out of five because it looks amazing, although it's not very functional. Right, rolling on to extras. And this shouldn't take long, hopefully, because it doesn't come with a great deal of stuff. What it does bring is very good quality and does work. So... If, for example, we go to his, it's sort of, I would call it like a, a predator replica, sort of a, a pirate sword. Is that a cutlass, I suppose? Is it a cutlass or cutler? I can't remember. Don't want to sound thick. I'll not put a swear word in there or else I'll have all my fans chirping at me. Yeah, really well done. Looks metallic. Then the bone style uh, grip. Again, he's got a trophy hanging off it. It's pimping it out. Really nice. So that is one of the extras and one of the main ones. And then you've got his, uh, again, his pirate style pistol. I was thinking when it, before it came, is that just going to be a recast of the uh, Jack Sparrow pit, uh, pistol? But it's not. It's actually quite a lot bigger than the, um, the Jack Sparrow pistols are. So, yeah, really nicely done. Good paint, good sculpt, everything. Moving down, the instruction manual, which... I did have a glance through because I always do just to make sure I'm not doing something right because I thought that the long chain which is here and that does come boxed up I thought it sort of draped down sort of from that side of his head 
and down that side but i'm trying to put it on i'm thinking that's a bit tight but it don't it just goes over his head so um, the metal blades which are really good quality a lot better than the uh, play toy ones like i said in that review the uh, throwing knives that the uh, it girl figure come this is just an, another step on we expect that obviously from our toys it's an higher price point so you get the predator style uh, wrist pegs which i've never broke a set of predator hands but it's always nice to know you've got some spares laying around and then obviously you do get a set of spread hands which are well sculpted and painted very characteristic these spread ones and i will say on this one because i've not noticed it before they're not actually a match because on the uh, the right and the thumb sort of down on this one it's more spread and i do like that because it's uh, again just gives a more natural look and then you get the uh, the fist equivalent again nicely sculpted and painted so it's not really a lot the generic stand now this for me is a little bit of a letdown because most of the predators now are coming with a diorama style base because you can't give predators a lot of stuff i think a diorama style base is the one thing you could give them and bearing in mind this one doesn't even have interchangeable uh, mandibles or a bio mask so i think they could have the reason i don't think they did is because the city hunter predator as well from pred 2 only came with a generic stand like that but i think if you put a collection of predators into you imagine i've got nine predators in there half of them has got diorama style bases the other half's got the generic stand it just throws off the size of them if that makes sense because obviously the depth on a diorama style base is a lot bigger than that would be so i don't like uh, that they didn't include that other than that there's not a lot i can think of that i wish they'd included but uh it's not a lot either way so i am going to give it a three out of five right rolling on to the value and what do i take into account when i'm scoring value let's uh let's simplify it i take into account what it cost me if it cost me anything at all sometimes i'm lent figures sometimes i'm sent figures to review then sell or sometimes i'm borrowed them you know what i mean it's different so if it's a case that i'm lent them then i need to know the price that they would be for me to have them so for example this one this is actually my figure as it stands i'll be honest and say i did buy it to review and then sell <clears throat> that was the plan but then when it came and i got the pictures and i started thinking is this the one to keep or should i still sell it and i don't know but what happened what normally happens I got about 10, 15 messages. When you've reviewed that, Rick, you're going to sell it. And I'm like, ah, I might do. But then I can't say to start saying to people, maybe, yeah, I'm going to. Because then I'll get 10 offers and then I've got to decide which person I actually sell it to. Now, that's a good position to be in because it's better than being trying to sell something and not be able to get rid of it. Now, on top of that, what happens is sometimes people say, because you reviewed that one, will you sign it? Now, I honestly find that a little bit embarrassing when i see or when i get asked it now this is only stuff that i do through youtube or facebook because people seem to know me ebay name even if i sell stuff through ebay so for example the zod last week as soon as the 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 buyer buys it i get a message will you do me a favor and sign it i ain't got a fucking clue i can't tell you why they want it signed but i'm not an insensitive prick that's going to say oh fuck off you embarrassment i'm not going to sign your figure why do you want it signed now i know i'm not famous i'm okay in the youtube world and i'm known if it means anything to them that i sign it then i'll sign it because it don't make a difference to me not to but i'm seeing more and more people trying to use this as a way to have a dig at me saying but he signs his box as old as he think he is I just think I'm me, boys. That's all. I'm asked to sign boxes for whatever the buyer decides he wants that box signed for. Would I not be a, a bigger wanker to say, no, I'm not signing your stuff? And I think you're a little bit insensitive when you say it because that person that's asked for a box sign has got a reason. One of them were for the son's birthday, which I did. One of them were for a guy who come up, had a cup of tea with me, when I used to work near Meadowall, asked me to sign two boxes straight across, the Snake Eyes and the Storm Shadow. You would have to ask them why they want them signed. But like I said, anyway. So that's going back to, is this for sale? It possibly is for sale, I don't know. Now, to score the value, I'm not going to tell you what I paid for it, although it's pretty much common knowledge. I got it from Anthony in Hong Kong, uh, Budget Stark, as you all know, and I know he sold 
think he sent about four, five, six or something like that on Monday. So he probably sold them all at around about the same price. Since that, he has also messaged me saying, I can't get anywhere near that price anymore because Hong Kong sold out. Now, I expected that on this figure, more so than the Ancient that I reviewed of a week, which were an exclusive. Simply because I think people have got in the back of their mind the version 1 went through roof. There's no way I'm missing a version 2. I think this will sell out fast and I think the value will go up. And I will be honest and say I normally sell for exactly the same price I pay plus the shipping from me to the person. On this one, I am selling it for slightly more than I paid for it simply because... I know the price is going up on this, there's no doubt about it. And also I need to cover the cost on something else that I got, namely the Michael Jordan display stand. So, <clears throat> take that into account. Like I say, I'm always straight down line when it comes to money because I don't want to lie to anybody. If it is for sale, talk to me about the price. And I will also say, because I think that I need to make it clear, that one guy has asked for the priority on it and I've said yes. So it's down to whether he wants it or not, whether anybody else offers. And I know people are fucking... This is another thing. The Python Iron Man, I could have sold that fucking figure 500 fucking times over in end. And through miscommunication, it had already kind of been sold. And then when I had to start telling people, sorry, pal, I've got to sell it to so-and-so. I want to sell it to this person. I need to sell it to this person then people start fucking having all hard feelings with the sends and fucking kick you off Facebook and all, all of a sudden don't fucking like you because you haven't sold them a fucking 220 odd pound figure. And I think to me saying, I've only got one in fucking hand to sell. I can't fucking sell you what I haven't got to sell you. Understand you fucking moron. So that's another thing, right? clears out the value on this you don't get a lot with it. The price were reasonably low compared to some of the other predators that have come out. So and I'm sure, I'm 100% sure, this is the one to have. Even the debate I had in my own mind were, do I keep that and get rid of my classic? Or do I keep classic because classic is still the base level predator that they are all compared to? And I'm thinking, yeah, but classic's never going to go up to the price that this one is, so do you keep this one? And I'm thinking to me saying... I don't know. I honestly don't know which way to go on it. But I know this one will go up in price. No fucking two ways about it. So I value, I'm going to give it a four out of five. Because I didn't pay a great deal for Well, I did pay a great deal for it. That's bullshit. I did pay a lot for it. But comparatively speaking, compared to the price I got on the Black Widow, this were about fucking £50 cheaper. So drawing your own, conclu your own conclusions to that. It was also about £45 cheaper than the Loki. So... It's reasonably cheap for new release hot toys, but it's not cheap, cheap, as in everybody can afford them, so to speak. I've got to make that clear because, uh, I don't know, I know people's financial situations are all different. So, the overall score on this figure is a 22. Now, you're probably thinking, 22 for that figure? But it looks cool. Yeah, it does. I said that if you rewind the review. Does 22 make this a bad figure or average or slightly above average or below? 22 is just a fucking number that's added up between the seven numbers I've already given you, and that's what it is. Does this figure look cool as fuck? Well, I'll show you what I'll do. I'll scan down it, and you can decide your send. And then, on the top of that, I'll say, yeah, it does look cool as fuck. It's not most articulated figure in the world, mind. And it doesn't have a shitload of extras. The box is only average, and the source material, really, there isn't one. So that is why I end up with 22. Does that mean it, it's it's three spaces higher than Blondie? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that at all. I'd sooner have Blondie. How many times can I tell you that? Blondie is worth a lot more and will be worth a lot more always. That is the fact. But is Blondie's body shit? Yes, it is shit. It's very shit. And his hands are even fucking worse. And Blondie's box is very, very average and very bland. And now I've seen about seven of them and they're not changing. I'm even more bored of them. Because someone reminded me, but you scored the Wall Street Killers box a three, and now you've only given it a one. Yeah, that's because I've seen probably six more I mini me since, and I'm fucking bored of seeing them. Twig it, you fucking numbskull. Anyway, like I say, the score is the fucking score. There's nothing I can do about it. Right. <sighs> Not a great deal more I can say. I hope I've made all my points clear, because I really tried to. Now, like I said... 
I think for the sake of them on that thread, the uh, the iMinimi thread, just chuck them this review on because they'll appreciate it. And if they don't appreciate it, it might just fucking wind them up a tiny bit more. So, yeah, if somebody can put that on, I'd appreciate that. I'd probably remove it straight away, but like I said, then a different person. If they throw it back on, you'll pretty much be doing me a favour. Same with uh, One Six Republic. Just chuck it on there, like I say. I'll, it'll be seen because it'll be on YouTube, remember. I, I don't really need them to have my videos seen, although... It will just wind a few extra people up, and I kind of like that, especially when they've been winding me up for the last three fucking days. So, anyway, thanks to all the guys that subscribe to me and actually really like me. All them people, like I said, Denny Kim, I won't spend another fucking brass farthing with that bell end. And his right hand man, fucking Omar or Wake or whatever. Personally, any person who thinks it's alright to call people fat or they're going to set the bulldog on anybody or pit bull or whatever he threatened us all we last night or telling people what they can and can't afford or people who work on minimum wage, whatever. Not the sort of guy I'd want advertising my company. Like I said, Denny seemed to be alright with it, so there I told, I told Denny with same brush. I also know Denny's told Wyman, don't send Rick any more I mini me figures. Denny, let me assure you, if fucking Wyman sends me another I mini me figure, pal, I'm going to put it on camera, I'm going to fucking stamp all of it, and I'm going to pay it money for it. You know what I mean? I don't want to. I'll, I'll offer you Dorothy, but I've seen reports on that, and that's even fucking worse than what I've already seen. So fuck you, Denny. I don't want to see another I mini me masterworks or all else that you've got to produce. Quicker you fuck off, better it'll be for me, pal, and take your little fucking rent boy with you. Um, does that make that clear? Oh, that little little bastard on fucking 1-6 Republic. Can't even say his name. Fucking, is it Antkin or fucking Atin or whatever? I don't know. Little fucking worm scurrying around. Looking, you can't say this. These are the rules. Fair enough. You've only got to tell me once, pal. You've not got to stay on my Facebook message page for fucking two hours trying to tell me off like my dad. I fucked you off once. I'll fuck you off again. And I can put a video up on here every night of fucking week telling you to fuck off. You do not rule me. Understand that. So, kick me off a fucking 1-6 Republic, so what? It's just one less fucking notification that I'll get through day, like I care. So, yep, yeah, fuck you as well. Uh, anybody else? Nah, that's enough fuck-offs for one review, I think. Anyway, like I say, got a 22 and a possible 35. It's a really nice figure. If you are interested and uh, the guy who I've given the first refusal of it don't want it, it will be available and you'll all know about it. The next review will be on um, that bad motherfucker. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. That's coming next and I'm buzzing about doing that one. So look out for that on my channel, bro uh, brothers. But for now, I'm out of here. Hmm. That is quite a concern, because instructions clearly say Ed does not come off. I think it must mean the Ed. I'm away from top of neck. Fuck. Let me look into this, brothers, because this could be a fucking outtake. <laughs>